Let's get this out of the way right now. Arthur Avenue, the still beating heart of Bronx's Little Italy, isn't a supermarket. It's way more than that. It's an Italian-American mecca for butcher shops, bakeries, cheese stores, food markets, fishmongers, yada yada, you get the picture. It's big, it's bold, and it's filled with lifelike sculptures of gangsters and every variation on the Italian flag. Folks on the streets say ciao without the slightest sense of irony. Sure, tourists flock here, but there's still a genuine community that keeps the place from becoming a theme park. The only real danger in coming here? People might just feed you to death. It's time to get lost in the supermarket. First things first, the sheer aroma of chili and pork drags me off the sidewalk and lures me into Calabria Pork Store, a legendary destination with so many dried sausages, they have to hang them off the ceiling. And the first thing that hits you is this unbelievable porky aroma, aged mushroomy aromas, and chili. Because Calabria is a particularly chili-loving region of Italy. They even douse their cheese in chili peppers. Can I try the Calabrese cheese? It's a very generous taste. You can see there's definitely a lot of chili on the outside. I'm going to see if it permeates the inside. And it totally does. There's basically like a bit of chili-ish oil that's running through the entire cheese, just like infusing it. It's like a nice heat in the back of the throat. It's really, really good. After all that salty, spicy pork and cheese, there's only one thing to do. Make a beeline for carbs at a bakery that's famous for their old school Italian cookies. Though, no surprise here, their bread also happens to have chunks of pork inside it. I'm gonna go over here to this wall of biscotti, and then you also have cannoli shells here. You can get your cannoli filled fresh. Can I get one cannolo? So she's gonna pull out one of these shells and pipe in that ricotta filling. Can't get much fresher than that. Delicious. The shell stays super crispy. Inside is this like mascarpone and chocolate chip filling. Absolutely delicious. Right over here, we have tri-color cookies. Now this is a classic you'll see in a lot of bodegas around New York City. And they should try a tri-color cookie. Three layers of like an almond paste infused cake with, I believe, jam in between, chocolate on both sides. Mm. That is really delicious. Built in the 1930s, Arthur Avenue Retail Market still serves the community with plenty of FDNY firemen shopping for groceries, specialty Italian vegetables with nicknames I can't say out loud, and an entire section of the place devoted to a small army of cigar rollers. We have an assortment of food contained in barrels that you don't normally find in barrels. Very tiny birds of different varieties. You got your quail, you got your pheasant, you got your guinea fowl, your Cornish hen, your squab. You want to see something good and show you how we pack parmigiano? No sure. Parmigiano. Yeah, I'll see that. I'm barely in the market a few minutes before David Greco from Mike's Deli, a longtime fixture of the market, begins to do what people on Arthur Avenue do best talk up the food they're proud to serve up to their customers. Uh, it's cut with a diamond-shaped crystal cut. Unlike a lot of places, cut it with a knife or a bandsaw. Right. Because when you crack the Parmigiano... That's where you get the texture. Right. So it's a three to four-year-old Parmigiano Reggiano Rocco. Wow. Nice quality Parmigiano. Three to four-year-old. Like, the average Parmigiano is, like, maybe two years old, right? So this is pretty much twice the age that the average Parmigiano Reggiano you would get at, like, a fancy cheese shop. Even though it's four years old, it's just as moist as the average Parmigiano. It's just like way nuttier and like way more umami. Cameraman always get left out, guys, so here. I got in trouble on chopping for that, actually. Which do you think is your most distinctive sandwich? Here's our um, Italian American sandwich. Oh my style. gosh. Sobrasada, prosciutto cotto, mortadella, capigola, provolone, lettuce, peppers. And we make it on our homemade focaccia, which is. You can see so light and airy. It's made from it's olive oil. It's practically a pillow. Now this is the fritter. Manji. Oh my god, there's a sandwich coming up too. You gotta taste everything. You're on Little Italy. Okay, you're right. What do you prefer, red or prosciutto? It's basically, oh my god, it's not even noon. You're in Italy. So what time is it now? In Italy, it's 6 o'clock. Okay, so this works out. It's 11.30, we're good. Thank you so much, Thank sir. Thank you, welcome to Little Italy. Cheers. Ciao, ciao. 
As I leave the market, I spot casenzas, where people eat their clams raw for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a way that hipsters can only hope to emulate. Casenzas is a seafood market, so literally you're getting the seafood straight from the market and ready to eat. Thank you. And that lemon there, homemade chili vinegar thing. Making it rain over here. Mm. So we're here at Casa della Mozzarella. As you can see, we are here during the lunch crush. It's an enormous line. We're gonna go try to find some freshly made mozzarella, which they make right in the back over there. Now I'm definitely lucky getting to glimpse how owner Orazio Carciotto makes fresh mozzarella by basically giving it the equivalent of a spa treatment tossing cube cheese curds with hot water and stretching the balls with hands that are magically heat resistant. I've seen the standard size fresh mozzarella before, but soon they're stretching and tying little knots of mozz. And result, I ate way too many. Little knotted mozzarella. Mm. You really taste the milk. And this is only, it only tastes like this before you refrigerate. If you chill it, it's never as good as like right when it's made. And eating way too much is basically the ending of anyone's visit to Arthur Avenue. Between the food you buy now to eat later, the food you buy for later but end up eating now, and the ingredients you end up cooking into a massive feast, Bronx's Little Italy makes it very, very difficult not to go overboard. And that's totally fine with me. The only real challenge? Eating a cone of gelato while carrying everything home.